Good morning to each and every one of you. It is always a great pleasure to have an opportunity to come out here and to be with each and every one of you. I want to look today in Luke chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 1. I'm going to read a couple of verses here to begin with. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And a certain woman which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, of whom went of whom out of whom went seven devils. And I want to set the tone looking at that because I want to look at the fact that you can't just go anywhere to receive healing of those things and those infirmities which affect us, those things that we looked here. This woman had seven devils that went out of her. Now she couldn't just go anywhere and have that happen, go anywhere and have that healed. No, she needed to come to Christ. She needed to come to Jesus to have that kind of healing. I think on too what happened with Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And how that they, I'm going to turn to it, it's in 1 Kings this chapter 18. I'm going to go over there and read about that. 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm going to read verse, starting in verse 28. And this is the prophets of Baal. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when, mid, when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, and there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regard because they couldn't just go to anyone. They couldn't just call on any name. They couldn't just do that and expect to receive healing, although they were going because they wanted to. There was, a, there was what was going on between Elijah and the prophets of Baal to see who was right. And of course we know that Elijah was right. I'm going to read verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was before was broken down. Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And we know what happened with Elijah. You could pour tons and tons of water on this, tons and tons of water on this altar, and even though it was watered down with water, which is opposite of what we would think we would do if we want to have fire, we want to have a sacrifice, had tons and tons of water poured on it, poured all over it, and it still was consumed by fire. Now, what happened with the prophets of Baal when they were cutting themselves and blood was gushing out? Did it make any difference? No, it didn't make any difference. Just like today when people call them all sorts of names, when they turn to all sorts of religious ideas, it doesn't help them in the least. They need to call on the Lord. And I want to go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Verse 19. Thou believest there is one God. Thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. So it's not just, and this lesson I want to look at today, that we need to have faith, we need to believe, but it's not just that we have faith, faith only, that we can just have faith and that it doesn't do any kind of works, that we don't go out and do anything and we just say we believe, what kind of state are we in? We can't just believe anything, just like the prophets of Baal believed that what they were doing was right in their own eyes and they weren't following after the Lord, but they wanted to do what they wanted to do. And we can see here in James chapter 2, verse 19, that just because they believed, it didn't make any difference to those. It doesn't make any difference to the devils. They don't work for God. They're evil and they do works against God. So just saying, and as we hear people say that in this world, I hear people say this. People say, well, you just need to believe. Or someone says, well, you need to have faith and that's it. No, no it's not. And I want to look at that today. I want to look at what it says about that, that we must have a faith that works, a faith that pushes us, a faith that, <laughs> a kind of faith, a kind of faith that produces something. If we go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we see that faith is required. Faith is necessary. Belief is necessary. We must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is necessary. That's necessary part of it. But that's not all of it. If we go to John chapter 20, In 
in verse 25. The disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands, and this is Thomas talking, and see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. How often do we see that? I thought about that. How often do we see that people say something like that? Well, I won't believe it unless I see it. A lot of times people say that. A lot of times they don't realize what they're saying. How often have you spoken to someone they say, well, I don't believe what the Bible says, or I don't believe here because I don't see it there. But at the same time, they pick up any other book and they read it and say, do you believe that? Well, yeah, I have I seen that? No, I haven't seen that. Well, that means you have faith. That's what this is. When you have faith, when you know that it's true, we can read God's Word, we know what He says is true, we know it's evident. But people still will say that. Well, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. They're doing many other things. If we go to Galatians chapter 3. I'm going to read starting at verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that which... They which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the Scripture, and the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham was a very faithful man. Abraham was a man that we can learn a great deal from. And we see how, again, how faith is necessary. But again, it's not like the faith that the world tells you that you need to have. If we go to Hebrews, back to Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll read verse 5. By faith, Enoch, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because of God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now we should all see that. Absolutely, we should seek to please God. But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he commanded commanded the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. And I thought about that, about faith. What kind of faith Noah had here? I'm going to read a little more, but I want to stop there and look at that for just a second. What kind of faith did Noah have? Noah had the kind of faith when God said, Noah, this is going to happen. This is what you must do to save yourself and your family. This is what you have to do. He didn't scoff at it and say, Lord, I've never seen this before, so if I can't see it, I'm not going to pay attention to it. No. He didn't do that. When the Lord said, do this, he went ahead and done it. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. Faith like Abraham. God said, go do this. He went and done it. Same with Noah. By faith... He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Faith. Faith that moves us. Faith that tells us to go out and follow after God. Someone can say that they have faith. Someone can say they believe. And if they don't show it, it's just lip service. All they're, they're just saying it, but they're not doing it. If Noah had done that, if the Lord had told Noah to go build an ark, and, well, I believe, Lord, and not, out and went, not went and built it, his family couldn't have been saved by not having an ark. He didn't have an ark. He couldn't have went out and, and went into the ark when the floods came, when the troubles came. 
he wouldn't have had it. And he wouldn't have been showing it forth just like today as Christians. If someone says, well, I have faith, well, then it should be shown. I have faith, that means I must be, I must be obeying God. I have faith, that, must, that means I must be going out and showing that. Not just saying it, not just me projecting it with my lips. If we go to John chapter 20. In verse 29, And Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. That is to all those throughout this world today, from that point forward on, that believed and had not seen, which includes us, includes us and anyone beyond us in this time frame. As time goes on, if it does last any longer, that's to those that are blessed if they believed because they didn't have to see. They knew, they believed what God said. They believe what Christ says here. They believe these holy scriptures. They believe it and they don't have to just see it. And it should be, again, should be evident. You know, a lot of times we think about someone with faith and what is a great hindrance to faith is fear. And we know, know in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Faith gets rid of fear if we have faith in God. If we have faith, then we should be showing it. If we go to John chapter 14... Verse 1. Start in verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have, t I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. Ah, oh, we look at that. We should have faith. We should believe what Christ said here. We shouldn't be fearful of the things to come. We should have faith that if we are faithful to God, if we're enduring those things, if we're being faithful, and not just with lip service, but in our actions, the things we do throughout our life, that we rest assured in the promise that God has given us. We rest assured in that. And we think about, I think about this when I think about someone with faith, and it happened in, in the same situation with Peter. When Peter stepped out into the water, when Christ told him to come, and he stepped down to the water, and when he keeps walking, he's doing fine, and he looks down, he sees the waves, he sees what's going on around about him, and he starts to fear. Faith gets rid of fear. Unfortunately, he started to fall, and he called out to Christ, he called out to the Lord, and he reached down and grabbed him and helped him. Faith gets rid of fear. If he hadn't concentrated on the things around about him, he would have never started sinking. But if he concentrated on Christ, he would have kept walking. Just like us with Christians, if we concentrate on Christ, we'll keep walking on and we won't have fear and we won't start to fall and slip. Now if we do, we reach out to Christ. We reach out to Him for help. But we don't have to slip and fall. If we go to Ephesians chapter 3, we'll read starting in verse 20. Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly Above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. God is able to do all things. God is able to keep us. He's able to help us. He's able to do above, exceeding, abundantly above all that we ask or think. Anything that we ask or think, God is able to exceed that so much that we couldn't even imagine. If we go to Romans chapter 4, verse 17. And it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, 
he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now you can imagine... If we looked at this with a carnal eye, Abraham being 100 years old, Sarah being past the age of being able to conceive, and the Lord tells him he's going to be able to have children, he's going to have seed, and if we looked at it with a man's eyes, we would look at it and say, oh, man can't do that. Man can't do that, but God can do that, exceeding, exceeding abundantly more than we could possibly even want. God can do that. If we go to James chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Asking a question. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Again, I'll reiterate the fact that if we say that we have faith and we're not actively working, it's not actively working in us, we're not actively going out and fulfilling what God has told us to do, what does that mean? We're just giving lip service. Now someone, as we see in the Scriptures, someone may benefit from us telling them what the Scriptures say. But they'll benefit a whole lot more if they see us doing the will of God. If we go to Isaiah chapter 29. In verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw nigh near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their, re and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You know, that's what it means when we have faith in God and we're following Him, that our heart is near to God. Our heart is not far away from God if we're following after Him. But if we are just saying that we have faith and we're not actively doing anything, then it's not actively working in us. We don't have faith that's producing anything. Then our heart is far from God. It's just lip service. It's just lip service. If we go to Galatians chapter 5, in verse 22. And here's evidence of those things. Here's fruit of those things. And we've read this many times. Fruit of those things are of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That should be in us and that should abound in us. It should be coming out of us. It should be produced. It should be bearing fruit. If we're being faithful, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Because if we're drawing near to God, we're getting away from the flesh. And we're drawing near to God, and we should be bearing fruit of the Spirit. We should be having faith and service to God. If we go to Mark chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 28. Starting verse 28. For she said... If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, this woman had faith that Christ would heal her if she could just touch his clothes. Did she just sit there and not do anything? Did she just sit there and say, I have faith? No, she didn't. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing of himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Who done that? Who touched my clothes? Who grabbed his clothes? Again, did she just sit there and say she had faith, or did she go out to seek him? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? 
And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. He knew who had touched him. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. She was made whole because she was seeking out Christ and she had faith that Christ would totally heal her. And she was right. We can't just seek anyone in anything and expect to be healed of those things that are needful for us. If we go to Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 45. Same instance, same thing we see over and over and over again in the Scriptures. Starting verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. And they came to Jericho, and he went, and as He went out of Jericho with His disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, set by the highway, said begging. And he... And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son, thou Son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he shouldn't hold his peace, but he cried the more and a great deal, though thou Son of David, have mercy on me. That is exactly what the world tells you to do when you're reaching out to Christ, when you're reaching out to Him. Hold your peace. Be quiet. Don't do it. Just hold your peace. Go on your way. This man didn't do that. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying, Unto him, be of good faith. Rise, he calleth thee. He's telling him to come to him. He's telling all the world to come to him right now. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And I see that, and I am filled with joy when I read that. He, casting away his garment, he threw off what he had on and went straight to him. He didn't delay. He didn't say, let me gather my things. No, he threw off his garment and went to him. And Jesus answered and said to him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He followed after him. He had faith that Jesus would heal him, totally heal him, get rid of that problem, get rid of that issue. And he came to Jesus to have it removed. He didn't just say, Jesus has the ability to do this, but I, instead of going to Christ, I'm going to go over to this other religion and I'm going to see what it has for me. He didn't do that. He didn't do that at all. He went to Christ. He went to the one that could make him whole. Just as the world needs to come to Christ today, the whole world needs to go to Jesus for healing, for all the healing they need, for all the things they need. They need to turn to Him. They need to relieve their self of sin. They need to remove sin from their life. And that's the only one that's going to do it. That's the only way it's going to happen. People can try so many other ways to try to remove sin in their life. They try it in so many different ways. You just go and look around about you in all the different ways someone will try to do that. Try to relieve their self of the guilt of sin. And there's no other way to do that. There's no other way to remove it. There's no other way to get that out of your life except if you turn to Christ. That's the only way you can be healed. That's the only way that you'll have eyes to see to get to not be blind any longer is if you turn to Christ. We have to have a faith that moves us. We have to have a faith that pushes us to serve God. A faith that calls us to come to Christ. A faith that pushes us to be obedient. A faith that calls us to go out and cry to Christ. To cry to God for healing. To keep us away from sin. We have to have faith that moves us. If there's anyone listening to this that's not a Christian, I would implore you to have that Same mindset, the same mindset of this blind man that you don't want to be blind anymore. We read in Romans 10, 17, So the faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And Romans 10, 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That's the end state of someone that is not willing to come to God. That's the end state of someone that's not faithful. 
And we ought to never want to be in that state. And we have no reason to be in that state. We can always reach out to God. We can always seek Him. It's never too late until we leave this life. And then it is too late. Hope that you would think on those things. We come together and sing the selected song.